Aaron Moorhead, Justin Benson, welcome to Fright Fest. Thank you for having us. So how's your weekend been so far? So we've been uh, cruising around film festivals for over a decade now, very luckily. And this is probably the best one we've ever been to. <laughs> Yesterday was one of the best days of our lives. It was so good. Yeah. 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 Uh, the technical standards are off the charts and the audiences are amazing. Mm. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it kind of, it's a weird thing where it's like people tell you for a, literally about a decade, you're like, oh, you've never been. It's amazing. And then you get here and you're like, oh, it actually. Uh, went past those expectations. We try. Yeah. We do try. People, I, I tend to space <laughs> out when people talk about like, oh, auras and energies and vibrations. This place has good energy. It's, it's good. It's, it's good an here. Honor for you to say yeah. that because obviously we've we've traveled the world together at CGs and stuff like yeah. that. So to, for you to say that is it's an honor. So something in the dirt. Yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, it's about uh, this guy who sort of befriends his bizarre neighbor uh, in Los Angeles and uh, when helping him move in uh, they witness something supernatural and instead of running away from it and, and being terrified they decide to uh, try to capture it and exploit it in order to give some meaning to their wasted lives and of course um, the uh, this, this phenomenon that's happening ends up uh, having very bizarre impacts on this slowly forming relationship that never was. Hmm. Tell us about where the concept for it came from. Yeah, uh, about 10 years ago, we started getting opportunities to, uh, to at least pitch on the, like these bigger haunted house franchises. And, um, and they'd always say like, oh, like, you know, we know this probably isn't your thing, but just be as free as you want. It goes up to center, be weird, give us, what you, give us that pitch, and then we'd do it. And then they'd be like... Uh, oh, the, the boss just called. Okay. It's, it's a little too weird. Like, every single time. It was, it, yeah. was, uh, it was exactly the opposite of what <laughs> they asked for. Uh, but after 10 years of that, a graveyard of pitches that never went forwards... Uh, this script came into fruition that kind of used a lot of those ideas with Ingram. And you write together, don't you? T take us through a bit of that process. Well, s no. Uh, Justin is, is the best writer in the world. And, uh, and so, uh, I know, you're too humble. But, he's, but so I'm, I'm blessed with the ability to not have to hit the keyboard. But, um, but we develop it very heavily together. Mm -hmm. we, we, base, we, we sat together in 2020 uh, during the, the the major fires of the the wildfires in Los Angeles, mm. and you know, felt very apocalyptic with the smoke choking the air, and we're not supposed to go inside or outside because there's a virus everywhere. And um, we uh, uh, sat down and wrote or, or fleshed out this idea of what we could make. Uh, during it that wouldn't feel like it was a movie made during the pandemic or about a pandemic or loneliness or isolation or what, whatever those themes that people would be exploring. Like what we would just make if it were a movie we'd make anyways, but we only have a little bit of money to make it. So it's just, it's kind of it was like going back to, it's like movie zero in a way, like bef back to, um, to just like that, uh, the idea of a, of a two-person chamber piece, but we didn't want to do that again because we did it with Resolution, um, which was our first movie. Uh, and so we thought, what is the escalation of that that we can now do? Mm. And uh, I think that was our, our writing process, that we sat down and, and played with it. Mm. We were actually reflecting on it yesterday, and we remembered that uh, part of the concept of the movie was actually fleshed out 12 years ago, sitting on Aaron's porch in Hollywood, when he lived across the street from the house that Kenneth Anger had lived in in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, wow. we ended up in that house a few times and it painted all black. Uh, on the inside, it's normal. It's just owned by some millennials, you know, <laughs> like, but, uh, but uh, that was actually quite cool that there, there was a weird little occult history just happening right across the street from me. And that's where, uh, uh, in, uh, in induction to the Pleasure Dome? No. What's the first word? I'm getting it wrong. Welcome. The Kenneth Anger movie. It's it's like oh. induction to the Pleasure Dome. Introduction oh, yes. to the Pleasure Dome. Inauguration. Yeah. Inauguration of yeah. the Pleasure Dome. Inauguration of the Pleasure Dome. Yeah, yeah. That's the one with Marjorie Cameron. In yeah. It. 
who's the widow of Jack Parsons. Mm -hmm. who so you is, were across the street from the place Marjorie Cameron used to hang out at. Yeah, it's incredible. Wow. Yeah. So with the picture, with something like that, um, when is it getting released? Well, is there a, uh, there's an American release date, isn't there? It's November 4th, right? Yeah, November 4th. November 4th. Mm -hmm. And have you heard anything about the UK? Actually, it is coming out in the UK as well, same, isn't it? Same yeah. day. <clears throat> yeah. It'll... So um, what are you working on next? You're, you're doing a, a developing like a TV series, aren't you? Can we talk about that or not? Not that one. The oh. TV. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can talk about our own. Yeah, we can talk yeah about that's, our own. that's the one I mean. Yeah. I, I think that I'll, I'll kick it off without, getting, without giving stuff away. It's not yeah. even giving stuff away. We're just not ready to talk about it. We just haven't developed what it sure. actually is. Uh, is to verbalize without the long version, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're a filmmaker, you have to learn how to pitch, and all we can ever do is talk for 30 minutes, like beat by beat. Yeah. But um, but we, it's some. Oh, go ahead. Please. If we do it now, we're going to take it on some country roads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. it does. But it's, it, 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 it sounds it all really interesting. To, to the things that we've been doing before, and it's mm -hmm. probably the largest escalation of, of what we've been, uh, what we've been kind of like the doors we've been knocking on for a little while. So. We talk about it an unhealthy amount. I get it. We had heard legends of Fright Fest for a decade, and we'd always kind of like hovered around in its orbit where we'd come to London and everyone would say, you've got to go to Fright Fest. Or we went to Fright Fest Glasgow, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And everyone would say, well, it's great. You've just got to see like Fright Fest London. And so uh, we've been slowly approaching this mythical place, and finally we were able to make it. And uh, not only does it not disappoint, it uh, has completely floored us. Uh, yesterday was the premiere of Something in the Dirt, and it was one of the best days of our lives. And we've been chattering about it like two little boys uh, uh, ever since. So uh, Fright Fest is pretty amazing. We won't, we won't be missing it again. Fright Fest provided me one of the best days of my entire life.